For state variables of type dynamic array, the stored slot where the array element is stored is kachak256 of the slot where the state variable array is declared plus the size of the element times the index of the element. For example, here I have a state variable of type dynamic array. Dynamic array of unit 256. The 0th element will be stored at kachak256 of the slot where the array is declared. The array is declared in slot 0, so this will be 0 plus size of element. Each element is unit 256. Unit 256 will use up all of 32 bytes, so it will use up one slot. So this will be one. And then times the index of element. The zeroth element will be index zero. So this is where the zeroth element will be stored. Okay, how about the first element? Well, the first element, we start with catch act 256 of the slot where the array is declared again. Catch act 256 of zero. Size of the element will be one because it will use up one slot, and index of element will be 1. So this simplifies to 1. And the second element, 33, will be stored in. Again, we start with catch act 256 of 0. This is where this dynamic array is declared in, slot 0. To this, we add the size of the element. This will take a 1 slot times the index of the element, 2. So this will be equal to catch act 256 of 0 plus 2. Okay, let me give you another example. Let's say that we have a uint128 dynamic array, private I'll name it r2 equals to 1, 2, and 3. So we have a dynamic array of type uint128 and it stores 1, 2, and 3. Let's list out where each element is stored inside the EBM storage slots. So again, we start off with kachak256. Okay, slot where the array is declared. The slot where this array is declared is slot 1. The size of the element is unit 1 to 8, or 16 bytes. So in each slot, this means that we can put in two elements, since one element will only take up 16 bytes. Two elements will take up 32 bytes, and that will fill up the slot. So the first element will be stored in, size of the element will be half of the slot, and then the index of the element will be 0. So the first element will be stored in kachak256 of 1. Okay, the next element, we start off from kachak256 of 1. And in this slot, we use up 16 bytes. And we can still fill up the next 16 bytes, which will be occupied by this first element. So the first element will also be stored in kachak256 of 1. And finally, the last element, the second element, we start off with kachak256 of 1. This slot is occupied by these two elements, and this one will be stored in the slot after this one, so this will be 1. Another way to think about this is size of the element, each element will take up 0.5 slots, and the index of this element is 2 times 2, so this is equal to 1. Okay, next let's write some function to actually get these elements using assembly. So say function test are it's going to take in two inputs unit 256 slot this will be the slot where the array is declared for example for this array it will be zero and for this array it will be one and then let's also put in another input uint 256 i this i will be the slot to get after we take the kachak 256 of the slot we will return three outputs uint 256 val value that is stored in the slot 32 bytes representation of the same value, b32. And then we also return the length of the array, uint256 length. We will first compute the kachak256 of the slot. Bytes32 start is equal to kachak256 abi.encode slot. And then we will use assembly to get the value and the 32 bytes representation and the length of the array. Let's start with the length of the array. The length will be stored in where the dynamic array is declared. For example, for R, the length of this array will be stored in slot 0 because this array is declared in slot 0. The length of this second dynamic array will be stored in slot 1 because this array is declared in slot 1. So to get the length, we do s load and then the slot where this array is declared, slot. Next, we'll get the value that is stored in start plus i. To get the value, we'll need to call it sload. The slot we'll need to load will be start plus i. Add start i. 
also return the same data in 32 bytes. B32 equals bell. And the reason why I'm returning the same value in two different data formats, the UNT256 and bytes32, is because when we load 32 bytes from a slot to see how the data is stored, for the second array, R2, it's easier to understand how this data is stored when we look at 32 bytes instead of UN256. Okay, so let's try calling this function test start. We'll compile the contract, deploy it, and let's call the function test start. Let's start by getting some elements from the first dynamic array, R. The slot where this R is declared is in slot 0, and let's try getting the 0th element. Hit call, and I get the value is 11, the length of the array is 3, and here is the 32 bytes representation. Let's try getting the first element. Get a 22, the length is still 3, and try getting the second element, we get a 33. Okay, next, let's try getting the first 32 bytes where two elements, 1 and 2, are stored. The slot where this R2 is declared will be slot 1, and from there we'll get the first slot. And now I get the length of this array is 3. This length will be stored in where the array is declared. This array is declared in slot 1, so the length will be stored in slot 1. If you look at the 32 bytes representation, we can easily see how the data is packed. It uses up the first 128 bits to store 1, and then it uses up the next 128 bits to store the number 2. However, if you look at the number, it gives us a large number. And it's difficult to understand that this number is equal to this in 32 bytes. Okay, let's try getting the next slot. For i, I'll put in 1, and then call. And we get that 3 is stored in the first 128 bits, and then followed by 0 for the next 128 bits. 